on to our sixth fight of the afternoon. In the 70 kilogram division, they're introducing first Jamie Walker from Black Country Combat just down the road, the Black Country. So he's got the, the home fans with him. Fantastic walkout song as well. Yeah, definitely. It's not the first fight we've seen tonight from Black Country Combat either, as you can hear, or you might be able to hear the roar behind us as Jamie Walker is entering the inspection zone. We've seen some absolutely fantastic fights on this card so far. All the gyms, the, the fighters uh, provided by all the different gyms have, have put on a fantastic show. And we know two great gyms here as well, Black Country Combat and Lions Den. We're going to see another spectacle, I'm sure. Final preparations underway for Jamie Walker as he makes his way up the steps, pumps the chest and makes his way over to the red corner. Now making his way to the cage from Lions Den Gym, we've got Fred Bevan with an amateur record of 1-0 undefeated with that one win coming in the first round, John. Seems like a common theme of tonight by Anaconda Choke. Yeah, a lot of these guys have got, uh, got early finishes on their record. That win only coming a few weeks ago. So he's get back to action twice in three weeks. Well, you can't blame him. Like, like we've said, you know, we're sounding like a broken record with what we've, the country's been through over the last 18, 19 months. You can't blame a fighter from wanting to now stay busy. As you see, just giving those that final high five to Craig White in his corner. Cage Warriors and UFC vet. There's not many better guys to get some final instructions from than Mr. Craig White. Fred makes his way into the cage. Both guys look in great shape for the 70 kilogram division. So we've got a 70 kilogram match up here. We've got Jamie Walker in the red corner with the black and white shorts. We've got Fred Bevan here in the blue corner, just in the black trunks. Cage door closes. The referee underway. says go. The fight is touch gloves. Fred Bevan straight in for the takedown. This is something that we saw in, uh, in his first fight just a few weeks ago. He looked for the takedown straight away. He likes that top pressure uh, when he gets uh, when he hits the mat, but yeah, he's got turned against the fage, uh, against the fence there by Walker. Well, Bevan was looking for that single trip. Oh, both guys swinging big on the break there. Huge takedown there by Fred Bevan. Yeah, Bevan got well it onto the hips, then ducked under, level changed, locked the arms around the ball. Scramble on the mat, and it looks like Fred's going to end up on on the bottom, but nice push off the hips there. Yeah, good control from Fred there. Even though he lost his position, 
He remained control of the situation. Pushed Walker off. Just looking for the up kick there. Oh, and he sweeps the leg away beautifully there, but... Yeah, that was a beautiful sweep off his back from Fred Bevan. He ends up, I think he's in, uh, I think he's in half guard here, is he? And can't yeah. quite see. Him, back the, to full uh, guard now. Walker landed some good ground and pound in that full guard then, but Bevan kicked him off. They stand back up, they're in space. And I think we can probably expect Fred Bevan to level change again, duck under and take him down, just as I say that. There you go. You've seen this one before, haven't you? <laughs> nice takedown. He's just going to look now to secure the position because we saw with that first takedown, he maybe had been a, a bit too hasty trying to look to secure the back and gave up the position, but he looks like he's been a bit more methodical with this approach. Just locking up the hands, making sure he secures the position. Yeah, Walker's got to fight the hands, which he did. He fought them nicely. He's trying to gain some separation now. Yeah, he sw swam that left arm over, as you can see, yeah. and got back to chest to chest. He needs to let go of that arm around the neck of Bevan, which he does, and they separate. Oh, big head kick lands there from Jamie Walker. Yeah, it's a good flurry from Walker. You can see the game plan of, uh, of Fred Bevan. He's Take him down when he can. Yeah, he seems Straight away there, he goes in for the uh, for the body lock. He seems to have slowed down a little bit though. He did get that body lock, he did get that close of distance. And now he's looking to take down. But John, every single time that Fred Bevan is attempting these takedowns, it's just draining that gas tank. He's got to make sure that his takedown attempts are well timed. Yeah, it's a good takedown defense from Jamie Walker so far. I just saw a nice little leg kick land, but we're going to see some more hang time. No, great defense. Well, Jamie Walker just got his toes to the mat and managed to stay upright. Yeah, he's got that body lock here. What Jamie Walker needs to do, he needs to get an underhook. He needs to get that left arm over the head of Bevan, get the underhook on Bevan's right arm, and that way he can start working out there you a go. place to escape. Just as you say, he, he swims that arm over, gets back into a much better position to defend. Yeah, there you go. The underhook's coming in. We're on short time now, though. A couple of nice body shots landed from Jamie Walker there, just on the buzzer. An intriguing first round between the two guys there. Yeah, it was. It's, it's tough to distinguish who really pulled ahead there because I feel that Jamie Walker's striking was really on point. When he was, when the fight wasn't on the ground and it was in that striking realm, Walker was being aggressive. He was pushing Bevan backwards. He was landing some nice strikes. A couple of good head kicks we saw as well. But then you can't ignore the wrestling and the grappling of Bevan. Was there enough of it to outweigh the work that Jamie Walker did on the feet? I'm not too sure, but I'm not a judge. Yeah, going by the judges' criteria, obviously looking for that damage and uh, effective striking or grappling. And, uh, and yeah, it's just a case of whether they deem what Fred Bevan did on the ground or up against the fence enough to, uh, to sway that, that round in his favour. I'm not sure if, uh, if they will see it that way. And like you say, Jamie Walker looked the sharper the two on the feet. You can tell that he's quite comfortable wherever the fight goes. But just looking at the approach from Fred, you you kind of get the sense that he just wants this on the mat. Yeah. He's getting a little too relentless with it. Like I say, he needs to time his entries a little bit better. He needs to make sure he's on the hips and he can he can drive through the takedown to complete it rather than having to hang around on the cage trying to lift Walker. Yeah, you can see they just waited for, uh, for Jamie Walker to make the first motion and then shot him straight away for a takedown. But like you said, I'd like to see him set up those takedowns a little better. Use the striking to set up the takedown because if, if you're just two one dimension just going for takedown after takedown it's quite obvious what you're going to do so your opponent can react to that accordingly and adjust his game plan but and every single takedown as well these are big action moments that are expending a lot of energy you know lifting your opponent up in the air trying to slam them it, it requires a gas tank yeah fred looking like he's breathing a little bit heavy there as i said big head kick just misses there as i said he only competed a few weeks ago and I mean, obviously, we, we're still only in the amateur ranks here, but these guys do cut weight to make the uh, the weight classes that they compete at still. Will two weight, uh, weight cuts in the space of a few weeks have an effect on him, especially with his fight style? So we saw a big right hand land for him there, but and he now gets taken down. Jamie Walker on top. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see uh, to see the bottom game of Fred Bevan here. We've seen him a couple of times kick off with those uh, with Ooh. those feet on the hips. Nearly got caught with an up, uh, an up kick there. Jamie Walker did. Yeah, he's just got to be careful when he's trying to land that ground and pound, but he's landed some heavy shots now. Yeah, Bevan's tying up well on the bottom. He's just trying to limit any damage coming from him on top from Walker. You know, full guard, locky guard, try and pin the arms down. Just make sure that, you know, 
It's a bit of a stalling tactic, John. Yeah, those, that closed guard, as you can see the feet cross behind the back there, that, that's the closed guard, and that's a bit of a defensive position. You're not really going to see many submissions thrown up from that position. As you said, bit of a stalling tactic, get a breather. And Jamie Walker wants them back on the feet, and I don't blame him because, again, in the first round, this is where he did his best work, and this is where he needs to get the fight back to. Yeah, he, he, he looks the fresher of the two fighters here as he goes for a big left head kick, and... I just I think slipped there as he uh, as he came crashing in and Jamie Jamie definitely wants this uh, this fight up on the uh, up on the feet and wants none of the groundwork of, uh, of Fred Bevan he's he spent some time there and he obviously thinks that he could do the most damage on the feet <laughs> and he just gives the uh, wave of come on if we're gonna uh, if we're gonna trade let's go for it yeah it's getting a little bit wild now from Fred Bevan you know the, the spin back fists from quite far out without getting your distance management in check but he that does. was a better takedown entry because he, he used that one-two. Even if he didn't land that one-two, he threw that one-two, which which got uh, which got Jamie Walker thinking, and that allowed him to shoot him with the double-leg takedown. He's locking up the back here as well. This yeah, is a dangerous position for Jamie Walker. He's done really well to find the back of Jamie Walker so quickly, and if he can get this... Nah, he was a little bit too high, a little bit on the side as well. We're in short time. This is a good opportunity for Walker to land some ground and pound. Yeah, Fred throwing uh, hammer fists from the bottom, but... Not really something you want to be doing off your back, is it? And another intriguing round, John. Yeah, it's a really close matchup because, as you say, Jamie's having probably the better striking exchanges, but it's difficult for him to get any of his striking going, really, because Fred just shoots takedown after takedown. And then when he's not shooting the takedowns, like you say, he's throwing wild things like the spinning back fist, and that can put you off when your opponent is... He's just like throwing wild things like that. He, I mean, it's, it's difficult to get into a rhythm. So, yeah, I, f I feel like the two the two bigger moments in that round there were the moments where Jamie Walker was on top, landing ground and pound. I think if Fred Bevan had managed to stay on the back of Jamie Walker at the latter stages of that round, finish on top, threaten with some submission, some rear naked chokes, trying to land some ground and pound on his back as well, then it might have been a different scenario. But I do feel that the bigger moments belong to Jamie Walker. Yeah, do you think uh, Craig White and the rest of the corner team at Lions then will be will be telling Fred Bevan that he needs to finish in this third round then? I wouldn't say necessarily he needed to finish because both rounds have been really close and we never really know how the judges are going to be scoring it. Just trying to listen into any uh, any instructions here from uh, from Fred Bevan's corner as they get the third round underway. Jamie Walker looks the slightly fresher of the two fighters, I think. But I mean, Fred Bevan, although he looks like he's tiring, he still comes in with like the Superman punch, and then he closes the distance straight away. He tends marches to find it that. down and lands a big right hand there. You tend to find that with these wrestlers, though, John. They can push through that gas tank, that toughness. Yeah, I think uh, Jamie Walker's just finding it a little bit difficult on the feet, just to. Land the punches at the ideal range and a nice high crotch there to take him to the mat. But Jamie Walker's been able to get back to his feet. Yeah, he's, too locked, he's locking in another choke here. It looks like a Dars choke. And yeah, that's tight. Yep. We saw oh. him win his first fight via Anaconda. It's defended well so far by Jamie Walker and yeah. he, he manages to escape. That, Jamie, was, that was tight, but Jamie slippery. Walker did a really good job to get on the side there to alleviate the pressure on the neck and eventually found the escape. Another big high crotch. Yeah, I mean, Fred Bevan's got some explosive takedowns. I mean, as we said a minute ago, he's gas tank, although he looks on his facial expressions like he could be tiring. His actions in the cage aren't indicating that in the slightest. And actually, you've just mentioned it there, the actions inside the cage. You mentioned beforehand, John, you feel that Jamie Walker was struggling to get going on the feet in this round. And I just feel that that's because he's expecting this takedown coming. He's making him a little bit hesitant to overcome it. He's a bit high up, eh? he worked his way nicely into the mount position, but he's a bit high up and uh, Jamie Walker's managed to escape out the back door and now they're going to stand and trade against the fence as a big left hand lands there from Jamie Walker. Yeah, it was a big shot from Jamie Walker, it caused Fred Bevan to shoot. And another big left hook and a good low kick from Bevan. And a <laughs> spinning back fist to top it off. Fred Bevan's got to be careful about throwing that, uh, that leg kick naked because he got caught with a couple of hooks there when he just threw the leg kick without setting it up with anything or without keeping that guard high just has to be careful coming in just throwing that leg kick on its own Fred kind of uh, pulls guard a little bit there with uh, Jamie Walker applying some top pressure he's in the half guard here he's going to look to 
posture up and lands some ground and pound. Fred's got to be busy off his back. He's done well in this fight of getting his feet on the hips and pushing away. Yeah, you I can tell that he does his squats, can't you? <laughs> I think that was a bit of tiredness kicking in from Fred Bevan as well. He was on that single leg and he just allowed the slightest bit of pressure coming back towards him to put him on his back. But it's been a high intensity fight, so you can't blame both fighters for being tired here. They've, they've swung big on the feet, they've been wrestling, they've been grappling. And as we say that, Fred Bevan... Straight on in a huge leg. suplex! I mean, Fred is just a machine when it comes to these takedowns. He just doesn't stop, he's relentless. And even in this third round, when they're both tied, he's still completing takedowns. He's got to be careful here, careful though. Careful that arm, look, As Jamie beautiful. Walker used the uh, Oma Plata attempt to reverse position and get back up to his feet. And that marks the end of the third round, a really intriguing fight between the two guys. Yeah, I'm going to be really interested to see which way the judges score this because I feel like Fred Bevan definitely had the better of that third round. I think that the second round, Jamie Walker had the better of and it all comes down to that first round, but I do feel the opening two rounds were really close. As I said, I'm glad I'm on this side of the table, I'm not having to score this fight. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Jamie Walker's uh, corner, the uh, the team at Black Country Combat there, were all smiles as they walked in through the, uh, through the cage door, so... I think they're confident that their man did enough in rounds one and two. Fred, Be uh, Fred Bevan was relentless, zombie-like with those takedowns, especially in the third round, probably landing five or six takedowns. I mean, Jamie Walker did a great job of getting back to his feet, scrambling, reversing the positions, but they were high-impact takedowns. Oh, they, they, they weren't just your standard trips or anything like that. They were high elevation slams, and, and they're the kind of impactful takedowns that the judges look and score. And we're just totaling up the judges' scorecards. So we'll hand you over to our MC to read those official scorecards with Chris Fensom. Fans are going wild behind us for Jamie Walker, who wins a unanimous decision on the scorecards. Be sure to check out his interview now, back with Steve. Wow, what an excellent back and forth tilt and lightweight division. I'm here with your winner, Jamie Walker. Jamie, what an incredible performance. It looked like he had you a bit early with some of those takedowns. How did you rally and, you know, get it into your zone of the fight? Yeah, he kept taking me down the start and I felt a bit like a fish out of water at times. But once I managed to get up, which I'm, I'm quite good at, and I let the hands go, I knew I had the better of him on the feet and that's what motivated me to win. That was a big difference was your hands, getting, in, getting your hands on him early, getting the strikes in. Did you think if it would have went to a fourth or fifth round that you could have gotten the finish? Uh, possibly, but he was getting me, getting me with some good tight downs and putting the pressure on me as well. But he's both gassed, so he could have either one could have finished. Now I got to ask this: What's next? When do you want to get back in this cage? Uh, well, there's a show on in October, my gym show, so I might be on that. All right, keep yourselves posted. Look for Jamie Walker and an excellent performance. Good, good fight. Good night. Back to the action. See you later, buddy.